10 Minute Jazz Lesson, episode 43. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the 10 Minute Jazz Lesson Podcast. My name is Nick Manella and I am the creator and host of this show where we try to bring you a short and concise jazz lesson every single week, complete with downloadable PDFs, which you can find at our website, 10minutejazzlesson.com. That's the number 10, minutejazzlesson.com. Please go and check out the site. We have a lot of cool stuff there, including all of our back episodes and a blog and a lot of really cool resources that you can find there. So if you're into jazz, which you obviously are because you're listening to this podcast, going to the site and checking it out would be a great thing to do. Um, There you can support the podcast. You can check out our store and generally just get a lot of information on getting to be a better jazz improviser at that site. Uh, We also want to ask you if you have about two minutes to jump on iTunes, look us up and leave us a five-star rating and review. That really helps us out to get us in front of more people that could benefit from listening to the show and sharing in the ideas that we're trying to give you guys. All right, so without further ado, let's jump into today's episode. So today we're going to talk about something that I like to call chord sequences. And this is a particular way to work on your chordal playing and really teach yourself how to handle almost any chord that you can see. So we're just going to go over two exercises today. And then what you should do in the future is follow up and write your own chord exercises. Um, I'm also thinking of putting this information into another ebook and really expanding upon this. So if that's something that you would be interested in, shoot me an email at 10minutejazzlesson at gmail.com. Let me know that you might be interested in an ebook that um, you know explores this concept a little bit more deeply after you listen to the episode. And I'm thinking about sitting down and writing, you know, 25 or 30 of these exercises if people would be interested in them. So Let's jump into the exercises. As I said, chord sequences are basically you're playing a chordal pattern that accomplishes a specific goal, and then you're actually putting that into all 12 keys. So this is actually a little bit different than what we talked about a couple episodes ago, or you know what, I think it was last week, where we talked about slowing yourself down and actually only working on one key at a time. So this is on the other end of the spectrum of that. Um, I still highly suggest that you do that. I still do that in my daily practicing where I'll work on a bunch of exercises just in one key to really get that key firmly implanted in my brain. And then you know, move on to the next key, maybe the next day or even the next week. Uh, Working on one key a week is actually a really great thing to do as well. Um, But today we're going to talk about the other end of the spectrum. And you should also do some work where you are working on all 12 keys at once, just testing your ability to be able to move from one key to another. Because after all, that's really how most jazz tunes work is they rapidly switch between keys. So we need to have both of the, the sides of the coin down. We need to really be able to deeply learn one key. And then we need to also be able to train our our mind to switch back and forth between keys very rapidly. So this week we're talking about changing keys. So if you look at the first exercise on your PDF for this week, you'll see that I'm using a major seventh chord and I'm basing my sequence off of that. It's actually a pretty simple pattern, but if you've never worked on some of these concepts before, it can definitely give you a little bit of trouble and test your knowledge of both the major seven chords and our chromatic approach tones. So let's talk about the first half of the line. First half of the line is very, very simple. We simply play one, three, five, and seven over the major seven chord. That is basic knowledge. If you don't know how to do that, that should be, you know, priority number one. Be able to play one, three, five, and seven over every single chord in every single key, all right? But then what we do after that is we're going to practice our chromatic approaches to the chord tones. So you can see I run right up the chord, one, three, five, seven. 
Then I'm going to keep ascending and I'm going to do a half step approach to the third. Then I'm going to actually come down the chord while doing half step approaches from below into the chord tones. So you have a chromatic approach into the third, then a chromatic approach into the root, another approach into the fifth, and then finally we do one more approach back into the third again, but an octave lower, and then we come to rest on the root. So basically what you're practicing here is you're practicing some basic information, and then you're practicing some more advanced information. The basic information being you need to know all four chord tones over every key, and then the more advanced information being that we're going to do a chromatic approach to the triad, so to the root, third, and fifth. Now this could be a real challenge for you if you've never done it before, and as always, the biggest thing is to get your eyes off of the page as quickly as you possibly can, but I have written it out for you in all 12 keys to at least get started, get the exercise into your ears before you actually try to do it from memory. So let me play these exercises for you real quick, and then we'll go on to exercise number two. <laughs> So you get the idea, I won't go through all 12 keys and bore you with that, but you would want to play down the rest of the sheet and make sure that you hit every single key um, on the sheet and then eventually memorize them and be playing them from memory because of course when we're improvising we don't have anything in front of us. So we want to commit pretty much everything we do to memory so that we can play it on the spot um, when we're actually on stage playing something. Alright, so exercise number two, now we're going to switch to a minor seven chord and do something a little bit different. Um, we're going we're gonna to shoot for a different goal over this one. This one is going to cover all the chord tones, just as the previous exercise did, but we're also going to be working on the 13 over a minor chord. The 13 is a really, really cool note. It's, um, it's very dissonant, but it sounds amazing over a minor chord. So this is going to kind of have you review your chord tones in each minor 7 chord on each minor seven chord and then it's going to have you descending doing something a little bit different so we start the exercise the first four notes are going to be one three five and seven just like the last exercise that we did then we're going to jump up to the nine and do this pattern that goes nine one thirteen five so you're really going to have to be able to identify that thirteen over each minor chord and this gets to be really cool once you can pinpoint every single one of those notes over every key you can really learn some great ways to use that thirteen and it's just it's such a hip sounding note that i think you'll really enjoy getting that sound into your playing so here's what exercise number two sounds like <laughs> So again, you get the idea, I won't play through all 12 keys just to save you some time, um, but you would want to play that through obviously all the keys on the sheet and commit it to memory as soon as possible. I know I sound like a broken record, but this is the really, really important stuff that you need to think about, and I know it's hard, but by doing the really difficult stuff, that's how you excel at improvising and playing jazz. So just make sure that you do that, even though it's really, really difficult the first couple of times. So a couple more things I want to cover before we end this episode. Episode, you'll notice that as I was playing these exercises, first of all, I was playing them slow. Second of all, I'm not swinging them. Um, I'm playing them with straight eighth notes, nice and smooth, just to get the stuff underneath my fingers and into my head. I'm not worried about swinging yet. That's really adding a whole nother thing to the mix that you don't want to do when you're just trying to learn this basic knowledge. The second thing you'll notice is that I've presented these exercises to you in half steps. And I think that's just a good way to do it when you're first starting out. Um, but, but 
don't do them in half steps all the time. Make sure that you are mixing up the different patterns with which you're switching keys. So you could do them in half steps, you could do them around the circle of fourths, you could do them around the circle of fifths, you could also do them by minor thirds. There's a million different ways that you can do this stuff and I highly suggest you explore all of them so that you don't get locked into one way of playing this. It's important to have that variety in your practicing or when you see a different different chord progression or different chord pattern, you're actually not going to be able to perform the information that you already know because your, your brain has identified it as a pattern and can't do anything outside of that pattern. Now, the last thing I want to mention is that after you have done these exercises really slowly and you've memorized them and you're doing them really, really well, then go into your iReal Pro app and actually make an exercise that has the chords going behind it so that you can actually hear these patterns as they relate to an actual tune where there's a rhythm section behind you actually playing the chords. That's important for your ears. So those are my three tips to finish up the day and I hope you got something out of that. Again, email me and let me know if you would like me to expand this episode into an ebook. It'll be cheap. I'll throw it up on the website. Um, you know, shoot me an email at 10minutejazzlesson at gmail.com um, with that or any other questions that you might have and I'll get started on that. All right, that's going to do it for this week's episode. Make sure you go and check out the website. Um, donate to the podcast. You can find the PayPal donate button on the website. Also, check out our store. If you have two minutes, please, please go on iTunes. Leave us a five-star rating and review. We would really appreciate it. And I just wanted to say that I really appreciate all of you out there that listen to this show. It's such a fun thing for me to get to do every week, and I just really appreciate you guys tuning in and all the emails you send me and all that kind of stuff. All right, we'll see you next week with a brand new episode. Have a great week, everybody.